So I was building my Virtual Boy game review website and I really wanted to make the rating cards pop. And I thought, you know, I can write a JavaScript function that kind of interpolates the value between zero and 100 and gives a color of green for 100 and yellow for in the middle and red for something like zero or 10 or whatever. And I think it really made it stand out like never before. So if you're kind of new to JavaScript and you want to learn a bit of color theory while you're at it, this is a great video for you. Be sure to stick around for the end. I'll show you a little trick to prevent flash of unstyled content. We'll start in Webflow and then we'll hop into some code and it shouldn't take too long. Let's get into it. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so here we are in Webflow. I will just show you the navigator here real quick. Let's just go ahead and expand everything because it won't take up the whole, the whole deal here. I have this all plugged into CMS because I have a lot of reviews planned for my Virtual Boy Games website. So we've got Wario Land so far, Bomberman, and Mario Tennis. You can see you click into one of these and Wario Land is just a gem. And if you can get your hands on it, let me know. I can't find this game anywhere these days, but uh, I do remember playing it back in the day and I gave it a score of 95, which is a great score. And then that is the CMS. That's really all you need to know about that. And then I'm just loading them onto the main page here and I'm pulling our rating text from, you know, I click in this checkbox in the purple box and I'm pulling this text from rating. So it's gonna give us 95 here associated with Wario Land. And the other thing you wanna know is on this rating text div, if I click over into settings, then down here in custom attributes, I have wb-element equals hue rotate score. And this is an identifier that I'm gonna use for our code, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute. There's really nothing else going on in this page that you need to know other than clicking over into our project settings. If I click on the gear icon here, and scroll down, you'll see that I'm loading a script from Code Sandbox and I have the defer tag on here because I'm inside the head. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna wait for the DOM to parse all of our HTML. And when that's done, right before the DOM content loaded event fires, it will run this script that we have here. Now let's hop into Code Sandbox and check out the script. All right, as I usually start, we're gonna select some elements on the page that we wanna run our JavaScript on. And the thing we want are our score elements. So to get that, we're going to use the document.querySelectorAll method. And within these two parentheses, we're going to pass that data attribute that we defined in Webflow. And so we wrap it in these little brackets. You see, I got the bracket on the left and the bracket on the right. And then we're saying WB element equals hue rotate score. Now we're going to say, we're going to get those score elements and we want to loop through each one. Right now we have three of them, right? But in the future, we might have seven or eight or even, you know, who knows how many Virtual Boy uh, games there are, but I plan to review them all. Anyways, we have this for each function, and this has a callback function to run on each element. So each element is defined here within the function parameters called score element. You could name this whatever you want, but I think score element makes sense. It's just missing the S. And we're going to call a set element color function on that score element. And that's not defined, so we need to define it. So I can define it here. I'll just say use this function keyword and then set element color. And that's going to pass another parameter, score element. So we're just passing the score element from here to here. And then we'll write our code in between these curly brackets. So we want to get the score. And to get the score, we can access that off of score element text content. But everything in web is going to be text. Everything that's in our DOM that we're putting in there comes across as a string in JavaScript. And we just want to convert that to a number. So we'll wrap it in parentheses and call the num we'll cast it to a number here. So this is an object that represents a number of any kind, and it says all JavaScript numbers are 64-bit floating point numbers. This is just going to be an int, you know, in Webflow, we limited the, CNS, the CMS to be an integer, which means there won't be any decimal points. We don't have to worry about any of that. Next, we're going to define a variable called hue, and this is where we're going to do a little math with HSL values and where we'll get into Keller theory. So we're going to take the score. We already know that this is a number between 0 and 100, and we're going to multiply it by a multiple, in this case, 120 and then we'll divide by 100. So you could just make this like times 1.2 and get rid of this divide by 100, but this is just how I wrote it out because people seem to hate decimals. Okay, so if I pop over here to a most excellent HSL color pick picker by Brandon Mathis, we can see that if I set a hue value of zero, saturation of 100, and lightness of 50, we get the color red. And as I scrub this picker from zero all the way up to 120, we're going through yellow, and then up to 120, I think is a good value for green. If you didn't know, the hue goes all the way from zero to 360, where we're back to red. But we only want the, you, do you know that acronym ROYGBIV, red, orange, yellow, green? So we only want the first part. We don't want any of that blue or uh, violet nonsense. 
So we get this to 120, and we've got our saturation set to 100 and our lightness to 50. You could adjust these, these sliders to different values to get different colors if you wanted to implement this sort of thing on your website. Back in the code, so we know our hue is going to be some value between 0 and 120. Now we want to set the background color, and to, to do that we can just use this HSL function. We're going to wrap it in backticks here to make it a string, and we're going to pass as a variable the value of hue. So by saying dollar sign and then wrap in curly brackets, when we have the backticks, this is called a string template literal, then we can pass the value of hue into this string. So the first argument for hue is going to be whatever comes out from this little function here. And then we have 100% as our lightness and 50%, sorry, 100% as our saturation and 50% as our lightness. Next, we need to actually set the background color of the element. So we'll call score element dot style dot background color and set that equal to background color that we defined here. And refresh. We can see we get our green, yellow, and red that were defined there. And now you'll also notice that when I refresh, we have this flash of white and then the colors take effect. So that's in Webflow, we designed it so that the default um, background color here is white, right? So this was set to white. If I switch this to gray and then publish now, and I come back to our website and refresh, you can see it starts as gray and then flashes the colors that we want. So let's go ahead and fix that. Back in Webflow here, the way we're going to fix this is we're actually going to set the default style to not show. And then once we've applied the background color that we want, we will show the element. So I'll just come back into the gear icon here in the page settings. And we'll define a style. And we're going to say, what's this thing called? I think it's called text rating or rating text. Let me cancel out of this real quick. Discard those changes. We'll just copy this value of rating text. Come back into our settings here define a style tag and close the style tag. And then we'll say rating text and we'll put a dot in front of that because it's our class. Open some curly brackets or sideways mustaches and we will say visibility to hidden. And we can put a semicolon at the end there. What this is gonna do is when the page loads, the visibility of anything with the class of rating text is gonna be hidden. So you won't be able to see it. So we'll save that and publish. But before we review it, we need to hop into the code and set the visibility to be visible. So we'll go back to the code and we'll say score element dot style dot visibility equals visible. Now I can save and we'll see it's just black. There's nothing there. And then when the color actually is applied, it shows up. So a little different tactics you could do depending on how you want to show unstyled content. Hey, if this video helped and you're really excited about seeing more reviews about virtual boy games, then please like the video and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.